we will also now look at, because we're talking about codons, we will look at translations. Now, all these discussions which might seem irrelevant to sequence analysis, this is a bit of a preliminary. Uh, and so when we look at translate and, for example, the FASTA format, uh, discussions about open reading frames, discussions about codons, all of these, all of these are um, geared towards towards our understanding um, of of concepts where we'll take some of this stuff for granted. So let's look at the translate two. So just to give you a quick sense of what happens during the translation process. So remember we talked about codons that was in the previous discussion and. Each of these codons, for example, you have the first three nucleotides is considered a codon and it translates, or the mRNA version of it translates into a, an amino acid, okay? And in order to identify each of these, look into the, um, to the, into the genetic code that we talked about, okay? So, if you want to translate in the first frame without any shifts, what you would do is you would take the first three codons like so, translate that, move to the next three, translate that, move to the next three, translate that, and so on. Uh, if you translate by a shift, which means you're translating from the second frame, you are excluding the first nucleotide and shifting thusly okay and whatever you get whatever amino acid you get from AGA is what is the result of the translation and so forth if you do a translation in the third frame or if you frame shift by two here is that the first two are ignored T and A are ignored and you can translate from GAT, CTA, GAT, GGC, GTA, etc. Now remember, the translate resource gives you a translation in the reverse direction, right? So 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime to 5 prime. So let's look at the reverse translation and it's a reverse first frame, and it translates thusly. And these are the results. When you look at the results of translate, this is what you're going to observe. In the reverse second frame, you're just going from three prime to five prime. That's what gets translated. The first C gets ignored, okay, and so on. And if you want to translate in the reverse third frame, the first two, C and T, remember we're going from three prime to five prime. So the C and the T gets ignored and you get the translation this way. And this is a an illustration of the, this is how you can say, well, what if you have a six frame conceptual translation? This is what it means. So this is the Expasi translate resource it's a very popular resource and it's very important for us to begin to understand it's a fairly easy resource to use uh, XPASI is the uh, bioinformatics resource portal and it used to be called um, Swiss Broad before the sequence that we had previously the mouse olfactory receptor that we've been looking at let me enter, you can enter the DNA or the RNA. Remember the conceptual translation takes place, but it's really, the translate occurs from mRNA, okay? But you can put DNA and RNA sequence, and again, make sure that the blanks, you know, are removed. Uh, they would typically be ignored, but this, it looks, it looks kind of neat. Recognize also that, um, that we don't need to use the FASTA format. We're going to use the standard genetic code, there's all kinds of genetic codes, for example, a mitochondrial DNA or, for example, a bacterial DNA that not follow the same code as a standard. So we'll follow the standard code because we're looking at a mammalian sequence. 
Uh, we can talk about compact with no spaces, but we'll use the verbose, which means that um, methionine or a start codon is represented with MET, and a stop codon, if it occurs, uh, will be represented by a stop, so that's a little easier to understand. And there's not much going on here, except uh, you just, you know, make your choices, put your sequence in, and hit translate. So you see that the open reading frame that we talked about in a previous video is highlighted in red. So you can see there's a stop stop, but we're really looking at uh, the sequence. And it looks like, from my understanding of olfactory receptors, it looks like it's a truncated sequence, but that's not really that important. Now, I showed you a kind of a short slideshow of how the translation takes place in the uh, in the second frame, that is after a, f uh, you know, a single nucleotide frame shift, followed by a double nucleotide and second nucleotide frame shift, and we're looking from the five prime to the three prime end, and then you reverse the sequence and you do the same kinds of shifts, and the video demonstrates that, and what you'll see here is that the protein as as we see the protein as expressed is just in the first frame shift. If you do a second frame shift, there's not much going on in terms of the functionality because you see a stop codon, stop codon, and a whole bunch of stop codons here. And the red is, you know, the reason why it's colored is the, the, the program is designed that the moment it finds a met, uh, it'll treat it like a uh, like the beginning of an open reading frame, but you know, not much happening here because you see a stop codon. There is another, if you again look at the, uh, the third frame, or followed by a two nucleotide frame shift, you'll see there is a region here, um, but then it's a stop codon. So this is a one example of pseudogenicity uh, where, where the sequence might be non-functional. And here are the, the reverse things. Again, not much going on. There is a you know potentially functional. This is, um, from my understanding of olfactory receptors, this is what's called a very popular may-dry motif. And the may dry motif is a motif that starts around, uh, so this is be the G protein coupled receptors, seven transmembrane helical regions. What you see here is literally the end of, or the cytoplasmic side of the third helical transmembrane domain. Uh, not uh, relevant to this discussion of uh, the use of translate, but uh, you know, it's a little bit of an added uh, bit of information for you.